Do 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 Tech by Tips. Hi and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. First of all, I want to thank you all for the support that you have given to the channel. Uh, we're currently over a hundred subscribers, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, feel free to write in the comments below uh, if there's an application or technology that you would like me to cover in this channel, and I'll do my best to accomplish that. Uh, in this video, we will talk about CICD software. Specifically, we will be talking about the open source software named Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins is a leading automation server extensible through thousands of plugins. It supports you to build, automate, and deploy any project. Uh, Jenkins is supported by a growing community of developers, designers, testers, and others that love and care about the continuous integration and continuous delivery. Uh, it is built using Java, so it uses the Java virtual machine, but it is very capable of working with most programming languages and in basically any operating system. Uh, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I've thrown a few acronyms along, uh, along the way, so let's cover that. So what is CICD? CI stands for continuous integration. And this means that when you're writing code, you merge those changes to the main branch as soon and as often as you can. These changes are then validated via a build that is put through a series of automated tests. This helps you avoid integration challenges that you would face if you wait until the day of the release. Uh, the main emphasis of testing automation is to make sure that the application does not break whenever new code is pushed into the main branch of your code. And uh, CD, which is the last part, stands for continuous the deployment. This means that the process automatically deploys the code changes to a development, testing, staging, or production environment after the build is completed. So it allows you to deploy your application at any time by just clicking a button. You can even automate it if you want so that no button has to be clicked and your customer has access to the latest and greatest version of your application. That is, of course, if it passes all the tests. Now that we have covered the basics of what CICD is, I think it is important to know that Jenkins is capable of more than just that. Jenkins can be used as a task scheduler to run scripts or jobs, for example, and this can be useful for many purposes. I've used this tool to do that and much more in a Fortune 500 company with hundreds of thousands of employees. But guess what? It is just as useful in a lab, in a home, or a small business. Uh, Jenkins, in essence, is a very capable helper that continually learns new things to serve you as a good technology bottler. Hence, its logo. Let's get to it. Our goal for this video is uh, using the repository that I have created for the YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be able to easily deploy uh, Jenkins instance in our light Kubernetes Raspberry Pi cluster. We can uh, do this by going into the repository and you will have uh, the files here. Uh, I'll keep on uh, adding more files for the different deployments as videos come along. But for now, you have the first one, which is the Jenkins deployment here. So that's where you're going to go to get it. Our plan for this video is so that we are able to run a Jenkins instance in our cluster. This is just going to be a simple one uh, instance of Jenkins, but running perfectly so that we can do our continuous uh, integration and continued uh, deployment of code. We can do testing, etc. So um, that's gonna be the goal. So we should see something like this. We have our application here, which is Jenkins, and that'll um, let us do all those fine, amazing things we can do when we're developing and doing DevOps. Uh, I want to make first a small clarification of something. Uh, on the previous video, we did the setup of the uh, light Kubernetes cluster with Raspberry Pis that are booting from the network. And as part of that video, we saw that having the 
master node of our cluster, booting from the Raspberry Pi caused some issues, specifically with access to the SQLite database, which made things uh, atrociously slow because the database kept getting locked. And this keeps happening, and, and depending if you're trying to deploy a, a big set of infrastructure, it's even worse. So I would recommend that even though you can run the full cluster from the network, from booting from the network, uh, I would recommend that you actually get your master Raspberry Pi node to run from an SD card because it'll be a lot faster and everything will be much smoother for you. In the end, uh, save you a lot of headaches. You can always back up your SD card every once in a while or using the uh, Raspberry Pi Pixie server, you can make images of your Raspberry Pi. The first thing uh, that we want to do is grab the deployment file from the repository. Uh, the link is going to be in the description. So once we get to the Kubernetes uh, deployment uh, um, repository, we're going to go into the DevOps tools and we're going to see here Jenkins deployment. We're going to click on that and then we're going to go and click on raw and we're going to copy that URL. That, that's how we're going to um, retrieve that so then we can go into our master uh, node in our Kubernetes cluster and then we can grab that by doing a wget and pasting that and that should bring us the Jenkins deployment file here which is where we're going to use to uh, do our Jenkins deployment uh, let's go over that file real quickly basically I has one two and three steps right the first step is creating the jenkins namespace naming it jenkins and after that then we create the actual deployment for jenkins this is going to be a simple deployment it just is going to be named jenkins 2 it's on that namespace that we created above we're only going to have one replica of the application named jenkins and we're going to use a Jenkins official image to um, deploy that in the pod, exposing port 8080. And we're going to um, mount a volume locally to the host. Um, because we really don't need to store uh, stuff permanently, like with the best case, because literally mainly what we're going to do is... Um, Pull from the uh, GitHub repository, run the build, run the tests, and then we don't need that anymore. So that, that's just fine for us to, to do that. And then the last part is to actually create a Jenkins service so that we can access this, fr uh, access this from outside the cluster in our uh, uh, computer. So we're going to be reaching to the IP. In this case, you have to change this to the IP of your um master node and then we're going to be using the port 8080 which is a default port for jenkins to access it outside so that's a simple um deployment that's all we're going to be doing with this file okay let's uh deploy jenkins in our light kubernetes cluster as you can see here I no longer have Jenkins, there's no um, namespace for it, I deleted that. And what we have is just our Kubernetes dashboard that we set up in our last video and nothing else. So um, Jenkins, the URL is not loading. So uh, now that So now that we have uh, downloaded the Jenkins deployment file, we can just proceed and actually tell uh, Kubernetes to read that file and actually deploy the things that we have described in there. If you are not very sure what to do, I've put some comments at the very end of the um, file that you can just use to execute. So we're going to grab this command, which is... Uh, 
the cube apply so that it applies the um, Jenkins deployment and we press enter. This is going to create the namespace for Jenkins, the deployment for Jenkins and the service. So if we go back into our dashboard, we should now see that we have a Jenkins namespace. And if we click there, we see that things are being created. There's a deployment that is named Jenkins and is being created. Uh, there's a pod named Jenkins also that has been created and it's been created in the worker one node of our cluster. And we have a replica set that it, it just asks for us to keep one pod always uh, open and running. So this is gonna do its thing. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but eventually we'll get to the point where we will see Jenkins uh, running like right now. Everything is green. The deployment is good. One pod. The pod is healthy and everything looks good. So now in theory, we should be able to just go here and refresh the um, URL. So it'll be the IP of the master node and then the port 8080. In this case, there we go. Now Jenkins is finally starting. And we see the user interface slowly coming up. It's telling us that we have to wait. It needs to get ready. So we just give the gentleman time to um, get set up in our uh, technology home where he'll be the butler and master uh, of our desires. So there's something else that we have to do here. So while this is loading, we can go back into the document and it says that we need to check the logs for the Jenkins um, pod because there's a password for setup that we have to get from there. So we are going to wait until this does its thing, but we can go here and we can start preparing our command. We need to change that for the name of the uh, pod so we can go back here into the dashboard and we go and select the pod name here We copy that into memory and Then we paste it there so that we're ready to run that command um, All right, so now it's it tells us that you know in order for us to set up Jenkins uh, a password has been written to the log so we need to go into the um pod and retrieve that password by looking at the logs. So now we go here, we run this command, which has now the name of our pod and it should give us the logs. Here we go. And as part of those logs, we see that there's a string here of text that is the password. So we grab that and we come here and we paste it. Once we do that, we press continue. It validates that it was actually successful. That was the proper password that was established by the system. And then it prompts us to either select uh, the plugins that we want to install ourselves or start with the suggested plugins that they recommend. So let's go with the suggested ones. It's going to start working on some things. Um, it, it'll give us a, a progress bar here. Well, it installs the plugins. So we just let it do its things. We can see some information here about the things that it's doing it checks the box for each uh, plugin that it has successfully installed as you can see it's uh, four per line and that's about five lines so it's like uh, almost 20 plugins that are suggested and it's going ahead and doing that you can see it's grabbing dependencies it's installing those dependencies it's installing the um, plugins, now we're down to Gradle, so as you can see, it, it's very useful here, it has a bunch of different things to clean up the workspace, to make timestamps in the logs, to manage folders, um, for credential controls, 
um, for pipelines, to send emails. So it's a lot of good plugins that they recommend and they're very useful. If you have uh, an Active Directory or LDAP, you can use that plugin too. So you can manage the users that have access to uh, Jenkins. So that's, that's really good. There's the email extension. It's almost done. We're waiting a little bit. And it is done. Now we have to create our admin user. So in here, let's fill out this information. Okay. And when we're done, we press the uh, save and continue button. So once we press it, uh, it then says that we need to configure the instance. This is the, the URL form that it's going to use uh, for like the root of the URLs. And that's fine because that's the IP of the master node and the port for Jenkins. So we leave it as it is and we say save and finish. And just like that, Jenkins is now ready and we can just press the button to start using Jenkins. It'll load the interface and now we're in a regular interface for Jenkins where we can do all of our amazing work. So yes, we have successfully installed Jenkins um, in our light Kubernetes network booted raspberry pi cluster so this is going to be it for this video it's going to be short and simple how do we set it up then in the future video we're going to go over different type of projects that we can uh, run and we're going to set up different pipelines for different jobs uh, for different uh, programming languages for different types of pipelines because there's a lot really a lot that you can do with jenkins so it's really useful to learn and to see all the possibilities. So I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment. Let me know what kind of things you would like to see. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.